All right, let's work on the example problems for parallelograms. Example A tells us that A, B, C, D, oops, forgot to label the other vertices here, A, B, C, D is a parallelogram and says if the measure of angle A is 56 degrees, find the measure of the other angles. So first of all, we know if A is 56 degrees, then its opposite angle, since this is a parallelogram, is also 56 degrees. And we also know that based on the fact that it is a parallelogram, that consecutive angles total 180 degrees. So if uh, A is 56 degrees, then we know that B must be the remainder of 180 degrees, or 130, no, 124 degrees. 124 degrees here. And if it's 124 degrees, then its opposite, D, is also 124 degrees. And there we have all four angles. All right, let's take a look at B. Example B says find the values of X and Y. And the trick to this one is to remember that the opposite sides of a parallelogram are equal. So we can set those uh, statements equal to each other. Let me move this over and give us a little extra space here for doing our calculations. There we go. So first let's set uh, 6y, or I'm sorry, 6x minus 7 equal to 2x plus 9 right here because these two sides, they're even marked uh, congruent here. So 6x minus 7 is equal to 2x plus 9. We have more x's on this side, so let's collect the x's on that side by subtracting 2x here and subtracting 2x here. Those will cancel and we'll have 4x. 6x minus 2x is 4x minus 7 equals 9. Then we add 7 to both sides and we get cancellation here. 4x equals 16. Divide by 4 tells us that x equals 4. So there's one of our values. And then our other value is actually easier because all we have to do for that one is set y plus 3 equal to 12 and then subtract 3 from both sides. And we get y equals 12 minus 3, which is 9. So x is 4, y is 9. And finally, let's take a look at example C. Example C asks us to prove the opposite sides theorem. And the opposite sides theorem, of course, tells us that in a parallelogram, the sides that are opposite each other are congruent. And we're told that ABCD is a parallelogram and that BD here is the diagonal of a parallelogram. And we need to prove that AB is uh, congruent to DC and that AD is congru congruent to BC, the ones that I actually marked here. Oops, except I should have marked them with different sets of, there we go. One set of three tick marks, one set of two. So we want to prove this this statement here that these sides actually are congruent the way I have them marked. So let's take a look at the steps of the proof. First we have ABCD is a parallelogram with a diagonal BD and that's given. And then based on the definition of a parallelogram we know that AB is parallel to DC and that AD, which we'll do in orange here, AD is parallel to BC right here. And then we know that based on the interior angles, alternate interior angles theorem, that ABD, let's mark that in green, ABD, so specifically focusing on this angle here, that angle is going to be equal to DBC. So we have this angle here right there. Those are alternate interior angles because if AB up here on top is parallel to DC and they're crossed by this transversal right here, BD, then this angle that I have marked, we'll mark it in orange now, then this angle here is an alternate interior angle to this angle here. So we know that those two angles are the same. And then of course we know that 
db is equal to itself. So if we were to go clear through and call these two things triangles, let's see if I can outline them in pink. I'm getting through too many colors here. If we identify this triangle here now in pink, and then alternately the triangle on the bottom in green, like so, now we've proven side angle side or angle side angle depending on your point of view we have angle side angle if these are if these are um, alternate interior angles so now that we know that these two triangles are congruent now we can say that AD over here on the left is congruent to BC over here on the right by corresponding parts of corresponding triangles are congruent step six and we've proven that all the sides are actually equal and the opposite sides theorem works now you'll see you're going to get this same series of steps almost exactly for one of your practice problems at the end of the lesson so if this set, uh, series of steps doesn't seem you know sort of immediately obvious to you you may want to go through it a couple of times and just make sure that you recognize where all all of these things fit into the diagram above you may want to rewind this and play it once more so that you can figure out how to apply them to the um, opposite angles theorem for your uh, questions at the end of the chapter.